Hello, everyone. My name is Alex Gavrilov, and I work for the UVic Libraries Digital Scholarship Commons as a graduate assistant. I am currently in my second year of my master's studies here at UVic, and I major in health informatics. So I do lots of things with um, data, data analysis, data cleaning, data visualizations. Um, so if you ever have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, or want to attend more workshops, feel free to reach out to me. Um, you'll see the email later on in the presentation. Um, and so today we're going to be talking about uh, intro to data visualization with Tableau. So the learning objectives for this presentation is um, you should be able, by the end of this workshop, you should be able to design and present good visualizations. So you should know your data, how to manipulate the data and how to build good presentations. Um, you should know the importance of data cleaning and presentation, and you should know how to import data into Tableau and manipulate it. Understanding difference between dimensions versus measures, um, navigating the layout of the Tableau interface, creating different visualizations appropriate to the data, creating calculated fields, formatting charts and visualizations, and creating data visualizations dashboards. Um, all of this may seem like a lot, but it's absolutely doable with just the most miniature sets of data. So when we talk about data visualizations, we kind of need to think of it in terms of four different dimensions. So we have your audience. Are they your peers? Are you talking to a public? Are you talking at the venue? So once you know your audience, that should inform you of how you should approach your data visualization project. Data form, nominal, categorical, ordinal, interval. Know which data you're going to be describing and how you present your data. Relationships in your data. Is it going to be a time series? Is it a comparison? Are you ranking different things? Is it correlational data and you're trying to prove a specific concept? So you should know kind of like which question you're trying to answer with your data presentation. And then the design, which I think is one of the most important parts because based on the design, you're communicating your knowledge to the rest of the audience. And if they have no idea how data analysis and data visualization works, one design may be the game changer for them in terms of understanding the data and kind of comprehending the knowledge. So right here, we can see um, the same data set. This is News Magazine bureaus over time. Uh, we can see that we're comparing Times Magazine and Newsweek, but these two are completely different charts. On the left, we see the bar chart, and on the right, we see a line chart. So if we are looking on the graph on the left, on the bar chart, we can maybe tell a story of how Times Magazine was more successful than Newsweek all throughout the years. And you could see that the market share of the Time Magazine is a lot bigger in 2004 and 2005. So for someone who doesn't have a background context who can look at this graph, they can say, oh, well, Time Magazine is obviously a more successful one. So if I were to look for a job or invest or whatever the case might be, they would go to the Times Magazine. But if you look at the graph on the right that shows the linear graph, you can see that both of the companies were actually pretty successful and were at the almost at the same level as one another throughout the whole time. And you can see that actually neither one was more successful than the other. They just had their own market share. And you can see that both of them were actually not doing that great throughout the years with just a little spike in 2004 and 2005. But Newsweek had the same spike as Times Magazine. So this gives you two different perspectives, one that would glorify one company over the other based on direct comparison, or if we're comparing those two companies to the rest of the market and see how they're performing. So this is what I'm talking about in terms of how you present the data and which story you're trying to tell. The same thing comes when we're trying to show specific distributions or percentages of data. As you can see up top, it's a pie chart. 
it's colorful. You can kind of see the percentages. Um, but a pie chart is not necessarily the best at showing the proportions of how things really are, um, because you do see that uh, purple and green are kind of the bigger ones, and then there's a bunch of smaller ones, so you have to look at the percentages and take a look at the circle again. Um, there's a lot of eye movement going on, so that's not the perfect um, example. But if we look at the bottom, the sector allocation of holding in the bar chart, and it's grouped from the most allocations to the least allocations, we can see a more clear picture of the financial distributions. Um, not necessarily financial distributions, whatever they're distributing here, right? Um, so you could see that it's sorted by the percentage from the highest to the lowest, and it tells you a different picture. The information is presented in a more precise way. So for someone who has no idea what's being talked about or the context, the bottom graph would be a way better solution to represent the information. Here's another example. Um, you, in, in with the same set of data, you can present it in three dimensions, in two dimensions, or in terms of just like an overall growth throughout the times. Um, this is another example of how just because you can do it in 3D doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be an amazing graph to represent your information, or just because you know how to do a good graph with just a couple bars. Um, doesn't mean there isn't a better solution to um, representing the data. Um, because when we are doing kind of like the bar graphs, we are comparing three distinct companies to one another at a specific year. But if we're doing a line chart, like the bottom right one, we can kind of see the progression throughout the years and we're comparing companies to each other, but also kind of to the rest of the markets, um, in a greater sense throughout the year. So that gives you more of like a linear progression of whether the company was doing good, are they growing, how they're doing. Here's another example of data presentation. So this is the UK's budget deficit and you can present it in the graph on the left with a bunch of squares. Um, we will have an exercise that will touch base on how to create this type of graph. It's not necessarily the most, I would say, like visually appealing graph, but there are situations where this might be important when you're kind of just discussing a specific project and allocating specific resources just to see where things are falling in place. Um, and then again, on the right, we see the bar chart that's going sideways, and that tells a way better story in terms of the deficit and where money went and what's the like actual budget deficit and how it was allocated. So before we begin messing with the data and building specific graphs, it's important to clean your data. So we need um, raw data. It needs to be normalized. And all of the extra information that isn't data or headers needs to be removed. So what does that mean? We're used to looking at the data from the Excel standpoint where we kind of need to separate things in a specific way and then calculate our averages. We are doing all of these things manually. Tableau works a bit different. So in order to convert this data to a Tableau, quote unquote, cleaned data, we first need to remove the header that says Excel report, October 2018. This is useless information for Tableau. And we need to remove all of the calculations because Tableau will perform those calculations for you automatically in the background without the need for you to even do anything. So the clean version would look like the graph on the right. So on the left, you saw that um, there is a specific student, let's say ID one with a male gender who goes to central school and they take three, oops, and they take three different courses. For Tableau, this kind of like this Excel format already compiles them in the group, right? So it's one student who has three instances of taking three different courses. For Tableau, to better understand it, we're just going to separate it into three distinct instances because this one student has a score in math, 
in science and in history, and they should be judged, um, not judged, manipulated in a separate way. Because if you break this down, this gives you more categories in terms of, oh, there's couple history, couple science, couple maths, couple different schools, male and female, IDs, and different grades. So this gives you a lot more options of how to manipulate the data. Do you just want to see the math students? Do you just want to see low scores? Do you just want to see students from a particular school? Now that we move closer to the actual hands-on part, uh, the difference between Tableau Public and Tableau, and Tableau Desktop is generally in terms of access to other resources. Tableau Public is not gonna let you save your work on your desktop. So you would be saving everything on Tableau servers and you would have access to all of the other works of Tableau community. So if you have a specific project and you wanna look for inspiration for visualizations, you will have access to the entire database of Tableau Public. Tableau Desktop is um, kind of like a commercial version. It is given for free to all the university students for one year. And this is kind of like an all encompassing, all inclusive version that you will be able to manipulate the data, connect everything and save things on your desktop. And since you do get a free one year license, we recommend that you install the desktop version. And that is it. Good luck with your workshop.